Hey, this is JR, aka The Tourist. I make travel videos. I make destination guides, hotel impressions, and general travel suggestions for those trying to get the most out of their travel. I want to talk about the city that I called home for eight years, Hong Kong. I'm not there right now, but I lived there through the 2019 protests, the pandemic, and the rollout of the national security law. Hong Kong is a big, dense city, spread out over the mainland, Hong Kong Island, and a couple few hundred outlying islands. Depending on how long you stay, you may be visiting sites all over Hong Kong. So there's no one obvious place to stay. Plus, it doesn't matter so much because Hong Kong is an easy city in which to get around. That said, I recommend that you stay in one of three areas. Central, Admiral Tia Wan Chai, or TST. Each of these areas have their pluses and minuses. I'll go over them in a moment. But first, let me address what may be the elephant in the room. Should you visit Hong Kong at all? As that's not the topic of the video, I'll answer briefly. Yes, you should visit Hong Kong. I'll come back and say a bit more about that later. But first, let's dig into these three areas that I recommend and see what each has to offer. Located in Hong Kong Island, the name Central says it all. This is the Central Business District. It's a major transportation hub, it's full of retail and dining, and it's Hong Kong's main nightlife area. But here's the thing, all three of these areas are a little different. But they all have shopping, they all have dining, and they all have nightlife. So here's my suggestion. Pick your hotel first. Maybe you're looking for the best value for your money, or maybe you have status with a particular hotel chain or group. Maybe you like a big full service hotel, or maybe you like a smaller boutique option. Whatever your specific considerations, I suggest that you start with the hotel and then think about the neighborhood as a secondary consideration. In Central, the two most well-known hotels are the Four Seasons and the Mandarin Oriental. Central does have some more mid-range options, but they are going to be more the boutique style. The Hotel Madeira on Hollywood Road and the Butterfly on LKF are examples. Here is where I mentioned that Hong Kong is not the best place for low budget travel and Central is not the best area to find cheap accommodation. Housing is expensive, so hotels are expensive. In this video, I'm going to stick to mentioning full service hotels at the five star and maybe four star level, but that means entry level rates at about 200 US dollars per night, and they go up steeply from there. If there's interest, I'll consider doing a video on low cost options outside of these main areas, let me know. And for a few of these hotels, including Rosewood Hong Kong, my favorite, I have video tours posted on my channel. If that kind of thing interests you, please check out my page and consider subscribing to the channel. Join me and we'll tour the world together. Just west of Central lies Admiralty and just beyond that is Wan Chai. I'm grouping these two together because they are distinct enough from Central to warrant their own category but not necessarily so distinct from each other. As I mentioned earlier, Hong Kong is an easy city in which to move around. There's the MRT, Hong Kong subway, there are buses, trams and ferries, plus taxis are relatively inexpensive. The defining feature of Admiralty is the Pacific Place Mall, perhaps Hong Kong's most upscale mall and home to several five-star hotels. It's where you'll find the Upper House, which is consistently rated as one of Hong Kong's best hotels. So we're talking room rates at the same level as the Four Seasons and the Mandarin Oriental at 700 to 800 USD per night for the entry level room categories. You will also find the Island Shangri-La, the Conrad and the JW Marriott at Pacific Place. These hotels are in the mid five star range with room rates in the 300 to 500 US dollar range. In Wan Chai at the upper end, you'll find the St. Regis and at the mid-range, there's a Grand Hyatt, which sits right on the harbor. Wan Chai is also home to several boutique hotels worth keeping in mind, like the Hari and Aki Hong Kong. The downside to Admiralty is that you're staying above a big mall, and you'll have to walk about 10 to 15 minutes to get to Central, or in the other direction to get to Wan Chai. Wan Chai is home to one of the city's nightlife districts. It's a great place to see live music, if you're into that, and you'll find lots of restaurants of the type that Hong Kongers and expats might frequent. One of my favorites is TMK Rap and Roll, a sushi place with a hip-hop theme. 
It's not as corny as it sounds. That covers the areas on Hong Kong Island. Now let's go across Victoria Harbor and talk about Kowloon. The densest part of Hong Kong is the Kowloon Peninsula. And at the very tip of that peninsula is Chim Sa Shui, or TST for short. As with the others, what you're looking for, it's probably here. If that's shopping, TST has Hong Kong's largest mall and one of its newest. TST has plenty of food options from casual to fine dining. But the biggest drawback of this area is that it has the least amount of nightlife options of the three. But it is only a 10 minute ride to Central on the iconic Star Ferry. TST is home to Chongqing Mansions, maybe the city's most infamous building, which has some of the city's cheapest accommodations. Don't stay there if you don't have to, but do go and have a look around. It's a hub for many of Hong Kong's immigrant communities. As such, there's great South Asian food and even West African on offer. As Hong Kong is a study in contrast, just up the block from Chongqing Mansions is Hong Kong's oldest grand hotel, the Peninsula, opened in 1928. Stroll its lobby and peep the fleet of Rolls Royces parked out front. Just up the block from that is the city's newest grand hotel, Rosewood Hong Kong, again, my favorite. Those are two more hotels that I would put in that top tier of Hong Kong hotels. But don't worry, there's also mid-range five-star properties in TST as well. That covers my suggested areas. Now let's turn back to that elephant. Again, the short answer is yes. The last few years haven't exactly been easy on Hong Kong. But it's such a big, vibrant, resilient city that it still remains an attractive destination to visit, despite the challenges and pressures. There are aspects of the city that I found welcoming when I moved there that had changed noticeably by the time I left. There are uniquely Hong Kong things like the Dai Pai Dongs, the open air food stalls, that are slowly fading and may not be there much longer. But the same could be said for many places in this steadily globalizing world. And honestly, it's just a reason to get to Hong Kong sooner rather than later. That's all I got for now. Stay tuned for future destination guides, hotel impressions, and assorted travel videos. If you got any value out of this video, click the like button. Thanks for watching.